Welcome to FX Options University, recorded live at the International Securities Exchange, the world's largest equity options exchange. Join the industry's top trading professionals as they provide insight and strategies for trading in the currency markets using FX options. So l- let me, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to shift gears here just a little bit. We're going to pull up a uh, another chart. So I, I moved charts to EUU. This is the symbol that I'm using. In this case, this is an index. It indexes the euro USD and the options available from the ICE on the euro dollar exchange rate are attached to this symbol. So if you were on your brokerage account, you were looking for the options available on the euro dollar exchange rate, uh, euro first, dollar second, uh, much the way that it's priced in the spot FX market, then EUU, that's the symbol that you would use. You'd be able to find those options uh, on that uh, on that symbol. And you'll notice that there's an, another couple of very subtle changes. Uh, over here on the right-hand side, we've got the exchange rate still looks, you know, it's 134.14, except you'll notice the decimal place has been moved over to the right-hand side two places. But for all intents and purposes, it's the same quote. So, uh, so not, not a big change. The, the other subtle difference you'll notice is that because you know, uh, the, the, the options aren't traded or, or they're generally not charted as a you know, 24-hour market like they are in the Forex is charted that way, you'll see little gaps in between uh, each day's price movement. And for those of you who are Forex traders and haven't traded FX options in the past, that, that may be uh, a, a bit of a surprise. It's a little bit of a change in the way that the look and feel of a chart when you look at the, uh, the index like EUU versus uh, where the options are based on versus the Euro USD charts that, you normally, that you're used to when you look at, a, at a, uh, your dealer charts or something like that. Now, uh, so one of the things to, uh, 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 probably the best thing that we could do is to start looking at the leverage between you know, one position uh, on the, you know, in the Forex versus a position on, uh, in, an, in a, a, a currency option. And let's use EUU as an example. Okay, so, and I, I also, I have another bias. So I, I have two biases I'll mention today. One is I, I definitely favor exchange-traded products over off-exchange traded products. But number two, uh, I, I, I do have a, a bias towards longer term investing. And when I say longer term, <laughs> it's kind of, it depends on which audience you're talking to as to what that means. So with active investors, that means I'm generally looking for, you know, positions that are, you know, I, I'm not planning to make any big moves out of that position for maybe a month or two at least. Uh, and in some cases, I may be taking a position and, and a, even an options position that's much longer than that. So uh, uh, sometimes when you're talking to Forex traders and you say long term, you know, short term to them may be a matter of minutes uh, or, or hours, but it's a really expensive way to trade. And so I, I tend to kind of gravitate towards the longer uh, term opportunity where you're, you're total, in absolute dollar terms, your potential profits are usually much, much larger. And of course, you don't have all the costs of trading in and out and in and out over and over again. So, so let's contrast this. Let's say that um, we had been evaluating an option position uh, versus a currency position. So we're, we're thinking about leverage uh, between the two kinds of positions as we start to think about uh, what's our upside potential. And we'll use EU as the example here. Let's say we were, making, we were trying to make this decision you know, in, in uh, uh, the uh, beginning of January, and we're planning to hold this position through, you know, uh, uh, maybe the third Friday in February. So we, we, we want to have, um, you know, we may even be going all the way back to, so maybe a two months worth of, uh, of time there. And the market moved, you know, about 1,000 pips, which essentially equates to 10 cents. So let's just make the, our numbers real easy, okay? Let, let's say that we decided to short the euro US dollar exchange rate uh, at 145, and we got out at 135, and we did this trade in the uh, uh, options market by trading the uh, Euro USD exchange rate option, which in this case was EUU, and, and we also did the trade in the spot market. So in either case, we made you know a thousand, we had a, a thousand pips as a, a potential profit. Let's take a look. I, what I did is I worked up a uh, spreadsheet. That, uh, that I'm going I'm to share that now. And by the way, um, as, I, as I share this, if you would like to 
uh, work through this spreadsheet on your own. I'll have it posted to my site at learningmarkets.com uh, where you can just go get it. Uh, it is, it's nothing special, but it did help to kind of break out, you know, what, what does this really mean? What, is it, what does it mean to, uh, um, to be comparing these two? So let's, so, so let's talk about this, okay? And I'm going to start at the top on my spreadsheet here. I've just got Excel open. And I'm going to start at the top. In column C, we've got our FX leverage. So what does it look like from an FX perspective? And then in column D, I've got our option leverage. So what did it look like? And I'm making one big assumption here that I need to fill you in on. I'm assuming that our trade basically took us right to expiration Friday. Okay? So, so it, it makes our math really easy if we can look at the option price as of expiration. So we're not trying to guess as to, okay, how much time value is left in this option premium, and, or is there any, or what, whatever it is. And it, so it will make our math a little bit easier. There, there are some variables that we have to deal with. Uh, if we're not holding an option all the way through till expiration, but in fact getting rid of it beforehand. Uh, and, in, and in this case, we would be buying uh, a put option because we're shorting, that's the equivalent of shorting the Euro USD exchange rate. So buying a put on EUU would be doing uh, a similar trade. So in order to control, so we're in the FX leverage column here, in order to control 10,000 units of the, of the base currency. So imagine that it's like, it, it's like controlling $10,000 worth, okay? So even though it's the euro. It's going to cost us $100. Now, now cost is, is kind of an expression here because um, the, you know, the over-the-counter Forex is a lot like the futures market in that you, you, what you're doing is you're posting margin. This is where that leverage comes in. 10,000 units divided by 100 is 100. So uh, uh, they, we, we've got $100 that's going to require in margin. That, that means that's We've got to leave $100 in our account. That's kind of a good faith deposit against losses. And if the market moves one pip, so that's a hundredth of a cent, uh, each of those is worth a dollar in, uh, in value. So if the price actually does move from the, from the second we enter this trade until the second we close it, let's say two months later, uh, we made a thousand, it moved a thousand pips. That means that we would profit a thousand dollars which, you know, if we assume that our margin deposit was kind of like an investment, then that's a 1,000% return. Uh, not too bad. Not too bad. But, and, and now, now, so let's, do a con let's contrast this to the leverage in a similar, so the same scenario, but where we bought a put instead of, with a couple sample prices, uh, but we bought a put instead of the Forex uh, currency. Because this is where traders, especially Forex traders, get hung up is on this particular part of the calculation. They get a little bit hung up on, well, what's the trade-off to some of the things I may be giving up, or some of the flexibility I may be giving up, what are the benefits that I'm getting in return? We're going we're gonna to look at that. So uh, now I just pulled a sample price. What I did, I, I looked at today, I looked out to you know, uh, May's expiration, all right? And I, I, I looked at the at-the-money option prices, and I, I saw one for $230 for May's expiration on AUU. And so that's what it would cost me to buy one contract of EU. And the notional value is, is real similar. It's you know, 10, basically 10,000 units of the base currency. Uh, and so, so it, it, you can think about it in very equivalent terms. Now you paid, in this case, you did pay that $230 to buy that option. That's how much that, that put option costs in this, in this example. Now the price moves 1,000 pips, so basically 10 cents. The exchange rate moves 10 cents. That option, if, I, if we assume that we were able to buy an option with an at-the-money strike price, meaning a strike price that was equal to the underlying price at that time, then the, the option would be worth about $1,000 at the end of that term. So it, all intrinsic value. So $1,000, which means that if we subtract $230, what we paid for the option, from the 1000 we make when we, when we sell it or get rid of it, uh, and then you know, divide 230 into the remainder, we get a 335% return. In, in both cases, it's a very extravagant return. I mean, they, they, this is why traders look at aggressive instruments like this. It's because you know, we, we know that there is you know, an X probability that you're going to have a successful trade. So you know, you're willing to sustain the kinds of risks that you know, active investing and aggressive investing entails. But the reason why we're willing to sustain those kinds of risks is because once in a while, these kinds of moves actually happen, and you're there to play the move. So the, the returns can be very large. Visit www.fxoptions.com. 
ISE ethics options can be easily traded through all options-enabled brokerage accounts.